thinking about the Great Commission today, well, coffee for commuters is exactly that. So if you feel need to sign up after I've spoken, please do, because it's so rewarding being out there, handing out the coffee, and uh, you don't get a long conversation. You get enough opportunity to smile and give them our love and, and let them know what's happening at Christmas. So they definitely marry up. You ready? <laughs> okay, so we're nice and calm this morning. It's going to be a little bit chaotic later, but the Great Commission, what an amazing thing, isn't it, that most of us are scared about. God intends for local churches to carry out the Great Commission. And how did the New Testament churches carry out the Great Commission? Through assembling believers in churches. God's strategy for the Great Commission, discipleship and evangelism is the church. The relationship between the church and the Great Commission has a significant impact on how leaders and members should approach the task of creating disciples and we carry it out together. So what does it mean to make disciples? Jesus said, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And simply put, it means that you demonstrate discipleship for them by the way that you live. And of course, you verbally communicate God's word. I believe in following commands. My time in the military at a young age, um, they sort of, most of it was a command, you know, we even going left and right with our feet, all these commands were continuous and uh, it supplied me with really good self-discipline um, for my future life. And this is the same of the Great Commission. It forms us to unite in love with Jesus in our hearts and us sharing him. In James 4, verse 17, it says, Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him, it is sin. This is called the sin of omission. Omission means excluded or failure to act or neglect, which is not doing what you're supposed to do. These words were given to every follower of Jesus. If I am his disciple, I am commanded to go and make disciples of others. On the other hand, if I am not making disciples of others, then I am not being the disciple God wants me to be. So the great commission is not to wait for the world to come to us. It is to go into all the world. Still daunting. Since the Holy Spirit alone can convince us that we need to be saved. And so he does. But happily for us as believers, the Holy Spirit now resides in our, inside each of us and uses us to effect global change. We only need to be obedient. I've always known I'm an evangelist. I spent many years hairdressing and... In this, most of my clients over the years were not Christians, but just through conversations had about doing everyday life with church and Jesus, relationships grew, and getting to know them while styling their hair regularly, I believe I was able to share Jesus' love. So my testimony from this time as a hairdresser is knowing that we are filled with his Holy Spirit. And he is, he is with us when we build relationships with others. Now, I didn't know this at the time, and it was in a life group that I was in, and I was the baby of the group. I was in my 40s, and I was the baby. <clears throat> and in that life group, I turned around, and I just said, I just don't get the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't feel God's Holy Spirit. And they went, 
But you ooze God's Holy Spirit. And in everything you do, and I really realized that in my own job at home, I was doing that. And I was so grateful to them for, for that. And I know we're not all good at evangelism, and it is scary, but like every member of God's family, we have all been given the great commission to go and make disciples. We must be alert for the opportunities to gossip the gospel. It's unfortunate that negative church experiences might turn people off Christianity, but it's true. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he left the church to be his earthly witness. Churches aren't perfect, but we need to make sure that we exude joy in our understanding of God. We must love those who Jesus came to save, both within and outside of our own community, and people will forgive organizational differences and challenges if this is in place. We could look at how relevant are the church's services for our young people, for our new followers. What could be changed to make them feel more welcome and interested? To be sure, some things are beyond our control and constant campaigning does nothing to change that. At the very least, they must understand that they are welcome at our services and that those around them care about them. The point of this is to see that church is important. It is not a building or a list of services, but a dynamic body of believers intent on serving God, a group of people carrying out the Great Commission together. I always say, I get to partner with Jesus every day. Well, we get to partner with Jesus every day, which is exciting. So God has moved towards us. While we were still far off, Christ died for us. This was written in Romans 5, verse 8. A mission has often meant, let's put something on and they will come to us. But the example of Jesus is go to. As Eugene Peterson puts it in the message, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And that's in John 1, verse 14. We need to move into the neighborhood where everyone lives. This isn't just creative hanging about and seeing what happens. There needs to be purpose, intentionality, and a de desire for change and transformation. Sometimes the most important words a person can say are their last. Jesus did. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, move. Are you fixed with an expectation that they will come, or are you willing to move? Now, I traveled by coach this week, and I didn't realize this was going to be in my talk. But the moment I was sat on that coach, um, I was just so excited. I was going to spend time with my daughter-in-law and my granddaughters while my son's off on another military exercise. And I always find the journey really fascinating because um, I get so much time to people watch, uh, think, and pray. Anyway, on my return journey, it was really late at night, and I was looking out the window and seeing so many people. It was dark, it was the middle of London, but it was so busy with all these people. The lights were on everywhere I looked. The reality, though, hit me. But I can't speak to all those people, so how do I move and go out? The city was just too many. Our country and the world are. But the opportunity to do this in my own home and community is what I can do. And that was sort of what I came to while I was worrying about the things I want to do. I think that the Great Commission makes a lot of people scared, and it did to me that night. It seems so big. How can we go to all nations? How can we teach people about Jesus? 
It still seems daunting and nigh on impossible. But I don't think Jesus intended us to be frightened by it, rather exhilarated and excited at, at the prospect. Jesus said, if you love one another, you are my disciples. And picture this, this is my picture, this is my brain. If you know me, you'll get it. I would love the whole world to love each other and know Jesus. I rage on about it to Andy all the time. <laughs> and I know now I can't do it on my own. And I haven't got enough time in my life to get round everyone after seeing the amount of people were in London the other night. So we know we can't do that. We can't do it on our own. We need God. And he's our manufacturer in this. And what we can do is we can be his distributors and we can actively live out our life of faith with us not telling people, but it's them asking us, which is part of like our up, in and out. My husband, he's got a really terrible habit. Well, it's a bit funny as well, but don't tell him I said that of putting a biscuit into his mouth whole. He thinks he's being big and clever, and it all goes in in one. He even has the full move to do it. And I don't understand it, probably, because I prefer to eat a biscuit in more manageable chunks. And it's a bit like the Great Commission. It's meant to be broken and cut up. We can't hope to change the world in one big, mouthful or go but we might just have a chance at changing the place where we work or the street that we live on in acts 4 verse 19 to 20 it says but peter and john replied which is right in god's eyes to listen to you or to him you be the judges as for us we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard and that really reminded me of gossiping the gospel so we are opening our hearts this is what it means to our communities and to those who don't need, know jesus imagine if every christian in the world but one other person to faith each year and that then those new christians did the same the planet would explode exponentially with new believers. It doesn't take so many years before practically everyone is saved. And my dream is so, so, sorted. It's real. Now, my tutor shared this statistic recently, and I sent it to Andy because we'd all been saying the same thing. How do people start attending church? And these statistics are high up on, a friend invited me, 86%. And then followed by, organized visitation, 6%. Invited by the pastor, 6%. See, even Andy can't do it all. Advertising, 2%. Now, he followed it with, there's the challenge right there. Now, these instructions were not just for his disciples. They weren't for his pastors, teachers, evangelists, and missionaries. They are for all of us. If we understand this, know and love Jesus, it will just come naturally. Our actions can lead to the transformation of others. So imagine if we all invited one friend to church. And today... I want to encourage you to follow Jesus as a disciple, not just a fair weather follower or simply a church going person, but would you follow him? And if so, I promise your life will never be the same. Thank you.